All right, guys, I am here with the beginning of my April vlog style wrap up. Let's check out the books I've read. Can we all take a moment to appreciate our new April page here? Sir Didymus crushing it with all my labyrinth pops. Love. There's the rest of them. Hi, Ludo. Hi, Hoggle. I kind of thought that I might finish a book. I snuck a really short one in there. This is Desert Tales, which is a companion spinoff novel to the Wicked Lovely series by Melissa Marr. And this one follows Rika and Shy and the Desert Fae. And uh, you do definitely get Keenan. Uh, Rika used to be one of the Winter Girls and she is like so angry that she got conned by Keenan that when the winter leaves her, she decides to go to the hottest place she can find. So she goes to the desert and meets all these solitary Fae. And you do see Danya and Ash and Keenan and Seth and kind of like the old world uh, characters that you knew come into play because it's the same timeline. It's not like years and years later or anything. Really, really cool. I didn't realize that there was a manga series that followed these characters and people were like, listen, really, really cool that you did like a spinoff, but we'd actually like to see it in novel form instead of manga in case we don't want to read that. So she did this and she expanded on the manga and fleshed out the story a little bit and made a little book, which is only like 250 pages. And I ended up really, really liking it. I think I gave it four stars. It was really cute. It was along the same vein as the other ones, like totally unbelievable. Like Rika is like hundreds of years old and she meets this like 18 year old teenage boy and he you know starts dating her and finds out about this entire fae world like in a week and is like totally accepting it's just like yeah it's totally normal totally fine so cool doesn't freak out at all like i'd lose my shit but that's kind of the way all of her books are so i just kind of have accepted that and it's just such a guilty pleasure like series for me i just love it i've just got a soft spot in my heart for it so i found this one on book outlet and it was super cheap and i love it so yay for more fay and that is the only thing that i have read so far this month because i technically finished it last month and i'm waiting to start a buddy read on the second for Song of Blood and Stone, so I'm not really reading anything yet. It's not true. I'm reading a Legendary by Stephanie Garber. I got the arc for book two of the Carval series. This one comes out May 28th or 29th, I think. May 29th. And so I figured I better read it in April. So I'm going to try to squeeze that into my TBR too. So I'm also reading Tempest and Slaughter. Yeah, Tempest and Slaughter by Tamar Pierce. And I'm 42% of the way through that. My ebook, my like lend for my audiobook runs out in two days. I'm not going to finish it. it. I don't, I'm not enjoying it enough to finish it. So at 42%, I'm going to DNF that one. It's not bad. It's just not for me. Um, so I guess we can count that as a DNF for the month. Enjoying, like the characters are cute, but they're very middle grade at the start of the book. And the magic system is interesting. The mythology behind the magic system is really interesting. But there's also like a decent amount of conversation about like 10 year old boys and erections and wet dreams and learning their bodies, which is, I guess, cool to see, but like, I don't care. Um, and the pacing is really, really slow. So I'm 42% of the way through the book and I feel like nothing has happened. So not really gripping me. So I'm gonna stop that one there. Hi friends, I am here because I've already filmed a little bit of an intro, but you guys have voted, you said in my bookish survey and you've also voted on Instagram that you would like me to do more vlogging and that you would also like me to do bi-weekly or weekly vlog style wrap-ups. So I'm going to try to give you what you want. I'm not gonna do a vlog style every single week. I think that's too much for me, but I am gonna do two weeks. So I will have a middle of the month wrap-up and an end of the month wrap up. I try to put a little bit more vloggy stuff into it. I'm gonna let you know what I'm reading right now. They're both in my book sleeves. These are both from uh, BookBud, who I will have listed down below because I absolutely love them. Uh, this book sleeve holds my current buddy read with Mel from Mel to the Any, who will also be listed down below. And it is The Song of Blood and Stone by Elle Penelope. This one I'm there on. This is a 
fantasy novel about two different sides of like a veil or a rift and the veil is kind of coming down and they need to save it. They need to stop it because on one side of the veil is this like uber villain who sucks the magic from people and you know they don't want him to get to the other side. Um, it is very very uh, racially driven. Like you see a lot of comparisons between this fantasy world and like race relations in our world and I'm interested in it. I'm here for it so far. Very like Wild West meets fantasy. In this book sleeve, which says, come with me where the dreams are born and time is never planned, Peter Pan. And it says never grow up on the back. Really, really love this one. The first one I got as a gift. This one I bought for myself because I loved it so much. And the next one is also an arc. It is Legendary by Stephanie Garber, which is the sequel to Caraval. And Caraval for me was okay. I didn't hate it. I know a lot of people really didn't like it. I didn't like the Night Circus, but I actually did like this one. So I reached out to Flatiron Books and grabbed the arc for this. So this one's May 29th. This one is May 1st. So this one comes out a little bit sooner. Obvi. So I wanted to get both of these read this week. Um, or this month. This one I've legitimately gotten like five pages in. I got the prologue done. I didn't even get to like chapter one. So I'm going to go babysit tonight. I'm going to take this with me to babysit. I don't vlog while I'm there with the kids, but I will update you guys on where I'm at with it then. This one follows Tessa. This follows the sister from the last book. She was okay in the last book, but the prologue to this one is actually kind of interesting. So I'm here for it. I'm excited to see what that one's all about. And uh, yeah, that's where my reading's been so far. I got audiobooks in for multiple books. I got the Bone Witch, which I have in physical copy, so I might stop listening to it because I also got Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, which I really want to listen to. And I also got approved for King's Cage, which is the last of the Red Queen series. And I read all of those to date and then I unhauled them, but I was interested in seeing how it wrapped up. So I think I might listen to Long Way Down and then King's Cage and get rid of my audiobook for Bone Witch and just read it in physical copy because I'd rather listen to the audiobooks of books I don't have physically. It is time for a little bit of a vloggy update because I finished two books since the last time we talked. One of them was the fastest audiobook of life, Long Way Down by someone whose name I don't remember. Um, I got the audiobook from the library and the author actually narrated it, which was really cool. And it says that it's like this 300 some page book and the audiobook was like at 1.75 speed was like an hour and a half. Jason Reynolds and that is about an African American teen whose brother is killed and he decides that he needs to get revenge upon the killers because that's the rules of the street and he decides to take the elevator down to go and revenge kill. And on the way down, he meets somebody on every floor that enters the elevator and tries to talk to him. It was interesting. I understand that the format of the book is like very poetic, which might explain for the way that the length of the book goes, because it was a very, very, very short book. But I enjoyed it. It wasn't great. I felt like I never really got to know the characters as well as I wanted to. The people that got onto the elevator, you got to know more than the character. And then I really didn't like the ending. I felt like I didn't understand what had actually happened. I didn't, I wasn't left with closure. So I gave it three stars. It wasn't my favorite storytelling. And then I finished this bad boy. This is Song of Blood and Stone. This is an arc by L. Penelope. And this is out on May 1st, I think. And I gave this three stars on Goodreads, but it's really a three and a half star read. I have a whole review for it up on Goodreads. I liked it, but this is a historical fantasy. So it's actually set back in time quite a bit. And it essentially follows a girl who is in, I don't want to say like there's a veil that kind of splits the world as we know it in this world. It's called the mantle. There's, it's basically like white, like redheaded white people. And on the other side, it's dark skinned people. And our main character, Jasminda, is born of a white woman, black father, and she's biracial. And that causes a lot of issues because she's raised on the side of the veil that the white people live on. So she's got magic, which magic doesn't exist on that side of the veil. So they're nervous about her magic. They're nervous about her skin color. She doesn't feel like she belongs on either side of the veil. It was a, a great story for biracial um, people looking for representation. And I liked some parts of it. I liked the magic system. Um, there were a couple things in here that I didn't love. There was kind of 
like borderline fetishizing of the fact that this girl was black and her love interest was white. And he kind of is like, I, I never thought I would find somebody like her attractive, but I'm so enthralled by her dark skin and tight coiled hair. And mm, it didn't sit well with me. And then there was a lot of pacing issues, like the last two days of reading. So like this last little bit, like the pace kind of picked up a little bit, but in general, I think it really lacked from like forward momentum in the story. The writing was lyrical, like really, really beautiful. Um, all these tabs are different parts where I thought were like really, really pretty. There's one orange tab that really bothered me because um, Jasmine is living on her own. She's a badass, really, really strong chick. And I love that about her. But she comes across these like soldiers that come to her house and she's like on guard that they're going to try to rape her. So she's super, super cautious. And then she sees them trying to potentially rape a male prisoner that they have. And she was like, I knew that they were deranged, but I didn't realize the depth of their de depravity that they would do that. And I'm like, well, like, what's the difference? Like, it's depraved if they rape a man, but not if they rape a woman. Like, that doesn't make the depths of their like horridness any worse or any better. I don't know. It kind of set me on edge. There's a couple things that I didn't love about it like in terms of that. Otherwise, I thought they handled everything really well. I think one of the drawbacks for me is that it is so, so, so clearly a discussion about race and race relations, biracial people not knowing where they fit and what world they fit into. But there's like almost not enough fantasy to cover the fact that it's a talk on like biracial and racial relations like it's so 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 evident that that's the point of this book that the fantasy element almost comes in second to it like it almost seems like more like a contemporary than a fantasy because it so heavily deals with that i enjoyed the reading experience i just didn't it wasn't what i thought it was gonna be it wasn't as great as i wanted it to be but it wasn't bad does that make sense? Like, I wouldn't say don't read this if you want to read this, but I don't think I'm going to continue with the series. I am here hanging out with my man Tice. You going to say hi? Say hi to the people. Not, not me, the people. No? Okay. And I just finished my first batch of reading for The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. And you guys, I feel like if this book continues to go the way that the beginning part did... Prepare for me to talk about this book for like forever. Somebody, so we're buddy reading this with the um, hashtag BR Wicked Deep, which is already over by the time you see this. But somebody described it as like practical magic. Alice Hoffman meets like The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. It is witchy, but lyrical. It's beautifully written. I am underlining so much. I am tabbing up so much. And I, trust me, I'm writing so, so much in this that like the tabs don't even do it justice. I have the pages broken up up top with blue. I have my tabs in green and I'm writing in green and I am really enjoying it. It is about um, three witches who, or three women who were drowned off the, t the coast of this island 200 years ago. And every summer they come back and they inhabit the bodies of three young girls in order to kill three sometimes more young men in like vengeance of being killed because essentially these girls were just too beautiful. They were too lusted after. They were seducing married men and the townspeople didn't like that. So they killed them and now they come back every summer and get their revenge. This super atmospheric writing and the characters seem really cool so far. I'm really enjoying our main character, Penny. I, at page 22, was already shipping her with a love interest that kind of like pops up out of nowhere, who I'm all about. So we're gonna see how this goes, but day one, reading is over. I'm about to put all of this stuff away and do some editing. Editing my book is going really well. I'm going to try to have it all done this weekend. I don't know if that's possible, but I'm going to try to do it. And I think that's it for right now. Last night, I finished The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. You guys, this book, this book was so, so freaking good. Like, so amazing. So first of all, it's beautiful right? I'm going to take off the dust jacket so that you can see the naked book because I want to point out to you guys that if you're interested in this book or you've thought about getting it, a lot of people are showing you this gorgeous naked cover 
with the stars and the moon and it's beautiful and reflective and stunning, right? It, like it's, it's gorgeous. This is beautiful. This particular hardback, like this cover is a first edition limited run. So if you want this pretty version of it, you need to get it now. They're not going to be putting this on all the books. This is just for the first run. Somebody asked me like, how do you know it's a first edition? How do you know it's the first run? I don't, I know that this book is doing really well. So I'm not sure. Um, this is published by Simon Pulse, uh, Simon Schuster. So I'm not sure how many there are, but I would say like, maybe don't wait until Book Outlet has it. You know, like I think that this is one that you're going to want to just go ahead and, and full price order, unfortunately. The premise of this is that there are three witches or three girls, three sisters who were killed about 200 years ago at the time of this book is told. And it is a current like story. So it's not a historical story. But 200 years ago, these three women were drowned in the harbor as witches. And then now every year they come back for the swan season because they were the swan sisters. They come back from the first of June till the last of June. And they inhabit the bodies of three young women that are in the town and they bring boys to their death. They kill boys. And that's their revenge for being drowned as witches. And this happens every single year. This town just knows this is something that happens there. There's like a big touristy thing around it where people come and they, they try to figure out which of the girls the witches are inhabiting and they wait and see like who gets killed every year. Like it's morbid. It's crazy. This is such stunning writing. It is so atmospheric. It is like a hocus pocus practical magic meets strange and beautiful stars of Ava Lavender. Gorgeous writing, you guys. I tabbed the bejeebus out of this, like, so much. A couple of these oranges are for, like, giant plot point reveals that have me being, like, writing in the book. Like, what the hell is happening? This one was split up into three days of reading. We read this with a buddy read, um, Twitter hashtag BRWickedDeep. And I loved reading this with everybody. There was actually, like, a closed group on Twitter that was, like, a a DM group that somebody added me into. Uh, it was a lot of the people that I read Fury Born with. And so Melanie added me into that group. She was like, do you want to be in it? I don't know if it's going to be too much for you. And I was like, well, just add me. And if it's, if it's too much while well, I'm trying to keep up with the hashtag, you know, I won't participate that much. But it ended up being amazing. And being able to talk to everybody about like my theories without spoiling it on Twitter was really, really fun. And everybody loved it so much. I just took a shot in the dark dividing up these pages. Wasn't sure if it was going to be too much. Wasn't sure if I was going to enjoy it. Wasn't sure what I was really going to think about it or how I was going to feel. And I am so, so happy this is the book that I chose to pick up with you guys. I'm so happy that I read it and that I loved it. This is going to be like fit up here. Like I don't even know how to put this up there somewhere, but it's like I want this to be like the front facing book. It is so good. I cried so much, guys. I had this moment where my writing was kind of like I was freaking out over my book. And I had tweeted to Shay Earnshaw and Saba Tahir and to um, Becky Chambers. And I was like, I can't believe The Wicked Deep is your first novel. I can't believe An Ember in the Ashes was your first novel. I can't believe Long Way to a Small Your Planet was your first novel. And just kind of like feeling bad about my first full-length novel. And Shay was like, dude, I believe in you. You got this. That's awesome. Keep going. And then I tweeted when I finished the book and I was like with a picture of like my tear-stained pages and with like all the tabs that I put in it. I'll put it up right here. I'll insert it, my tweet. And uh, she liked it and then she replied and she was like, virtual tissues coming your way. Like, this is so beautiful. Not the tears, but like the tabbing. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Last night I put my rating on Goodreads as five stars and I don't even know what I'm gonna say about it because I don't wanna spoil it. I want you guys to experience it. But if you like atmospheric, eerie, like super haunting, really, really cool, ghost stories and love stories and just beautiful writing and like plot twists and turns which granted I think a lot of us probably saw coming um did not detract at all from the enjoyment of the book it is so good and it broke my heart and put it back together and then broke it again and I don't even know but it was so, it was I'm gonna say it's so good again fuck me it was amazing. And I think this is going to go down as like one of my favorite witchy reads ever. This will 
probably end up on my top 10 of the year or top whatever I do of the year because the list is getting longer and longer guys. I've read some really great books. But this was a really fast read. I ended up reading it in two days because instead of waiting for today which was the last day of the buddy read I finished it last night. I couldn't wait. I don't know what I want to pick up after this because I just want to like reread this again but I think I'm going to try to still continue with Legendary um, and then I think I may pick up Spellbook for the Lost and Found because I'm in a really witchy mood and I feel like maybe nothing's gonna live up but like that's the mood I'm in so we're gonna see and then I have a couple more buddy reads coming up through the end of the month I've got to still read my buddy read for the Book Hangover Club I've got Bad Romance coming up like there's some buddy reads still coming I'm not sure exactly where this vlog's gonna end up so We'll uh we'll check that out later. We're gonna have we're gonna have an every two week vlog now. So um update on the book. My novel's going really well. Today is the what the hell today's today's the ninth, and I have thirty five more pages left to, to edit of book one of my novel. And then I'm gonna probably put it down for a little while, get a little bit of room from it, put it aside till probably the end of the month and work on writing book two while I get a little bit of distance from book one. And then I'm gonna reprint out book one, read through it again, and then hopefully get to beta sooner than later. Um, if you wanna know what my binder looks like and how I edit, I have a whole video on how I edit that I will have up above. So you can check that out. That's it for now. I'm gonna go do more work stuff. I need to edit videos. I need to film videos. I need to heal my heart, guys. I cried so hard last night. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go because I'm just repeating myself. That's it for this update. Bye!